colleague of mine showed me Marvelous Designer a while back, and it looked neat, but I thought it was just for fashion designers to test out designs on their computer digitally or something. I wasn't too interested. However, I was way wrong. Upon trying the trial a few months later, I was amazed to find out how incredibly easy it is to design realistic clothing in no time at all and export it to my favorite 3D modeling program of choice. What would take hours to days to model before, I could now create and export in minutes. There is a serious lack of teaching material, however, and thus begins my series on using Marvelous Designer to create 3D models of clothing for characters and other cloth-based simulation needs. In this series, we will look at the various ways of using Marvelous Designer to design not only clothing, but household items and things you wouldn't even think of. By the end of this series, you should be able to use Marvelous Designer as well as any enthusiast. It is truly one of the easiest to use programs I have met in a long, long time. With that out of the way, let me introduce myself, Insomnia from Blender Tech. Our motto, create your way. And welcome to the first video in a small series on using Marvelous Designer to create cloth-based 3D meshes. In today's video, we're going to go over the UI and other basics of the program. With that said, let's get started. I'm going to skip over the program first and hop into Firefox. I have the Marvelous Designer website open here. They have a great pricing model. You can buy the program outright for $550, which might seem large at first, but of course the, the time savings will pay for itself if you are a serious uh, designer. However, you can also use it on a monthly subscription base basis for $60, which isn't entirely cheap but it isn't that expensive either also you can of course try their 15 day free trial and i suggest you do that because it is quite powerful software and you may fall in love with it so back in marvelous designer when you first open it up you are presented with our female here with her dress this is called your avatar that is the actual female and you can see I can change the model just by selecting a different avatar and it will load it. As you can see, dress doesn't fit him too well. But anyways, you can also uh, import your own models as avatars. But we'll get to that later. Let's hop back to the stock girl. So if we close out of the avatar editor, we have a few things to look at. We have the main 3D panel here. And so in this panel, what you do is you left click to select points so you can see that creates a little blue dot so if i left click on say where the belly button would be i select that piece of clothing which is created over here you can see that little blue dot showing up as well so you can see the, the two points correlate that'll help you line things out when you're making virtual sewing points we right click and hold the mouse and drag to 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 rotate around to orbit and we use the middle mouse button to pan as well as of course the scroll wheel to zoom now if you don't have a mouse set up that way or you're on a laptop as i have been before under preferences or sorry settings user settings under uh, view controls you can change these to some pretty good setups that actually work well on the laptop so we have our 3D window here. You have a few options in here. You can turn the garment on and off. You have a few different options. We won't really go over that. You have the avatar options. You can turn it on and off. And there's also a few other options that we won't get into. You have um, the different views. So there's textured, um, untextured, there's wireframe, um, and a strain map. Again, We'll just be using regular texture or untextured, so we won't go into that. And you have, of course, your avatar. And it can be textured, untextured, or wireframe. But we will stick with textured. And so, with that window out of the way, we have the window next to it, which is your garment designer window. Uh, I like to call it the 2D window. 3D window, 2D window. Kind of easy. So in here, you use the middle mouse button and hold and drag to pan and the mouse wheel to zoom. It's completely 2D. When you select an item, say a piece of clothing, you notice I can select it in either the 2D or the 3D window. 
we get the property editor. Whenever you select something, this will bring up all the properties of what you have selected. So here I have different properties for um, how, how accurate the simulation is, if this is an elastic piece of clothing or not, the the pressure of the clothing, um, how much it will expand or contract, and, and all sorts of other things. If I was to select in our object browser, um, a piece of fabric, say the dress skirt fabric, as you can see, it's highlighted all of the fabric for the skirt. It, it gives me some uh, basic options. You can you see I have a material here, a texture I can choose. Um, and a few other things but what will be most important is a physical property and you can see under the presets panel there's all sorts of things leather wool um jerseys windbreaker um leather belt uh all sorts of things and um going into detail you can of course tweak those so the property editor is where you can do some tweaking and whenever you select something you'll always have properties that you can tweak um, back in the object browser up in the top right hand corner we have fabric and so you can add different fabric types for different parts of your garment, your 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 uh, model. You have your scene which will list all of the patterns and also your uh, avatar all of so you can import multiple objects. You could have 10 characters in here, you could have a um, you could have, say, oh, I don't know. You could have a couch that you wanted to put clo or cloth on, sorry, that you could import in here, and so it would show up under the 3D simulation uh, uh, tab. But you really won't spend any time in here, or very little, um, especially at the beginning. You'll mostly just stick in the fabric panel. And A point and ABV, we will not go into at all. Moving on, our toolbar um, up in the 3D and 2D panels, we'll go over a few things. This button right up here is to simulate the fabric. So when we press that, it starts simulating it. So it's a real-time simulation of the fabric. As you can see, because I adjusted the pressure settings for this little fold here, it's doing wonky things now. It's flying through space. But as you can see, it's a real-time simulation, and you can also pull on the fabric to get it just the way you want. And it might look a little ragged, and sometimes that's because, of course, real-time cloth simulation isn't perfect. But Marvelous Designer does do a great job, and uh, it usually settles out on its own. And you can increase the simulation quality by selecting, um, sorry, by selecting a piece of uh, or by selecting a part of your garment and changing the particle distance down to something like 10 or 5. I won't do this in the video because it will slow it down to a crawl, but that's how you increase the simulation quality. So you can turn that on or off at will. You'll usually want to obviously start with it off when you're just designing your garment and then leave it on as you're tweaking. We'll go into that more when we start to design something. You have your basic tools. You have select and move. So that allows you to obviously, well, select and move. You have select mesh box. So this allows you to uh, box select, as you can see, just certain parts of the mesh. Um, and then you have uh, add pin box. So this allows you to pin certain areas in a box select. So we won't be going into pinning or anything. You have basting, um, which we won't be getting into. You have actually a lot of these you really won't be going into reset can be helpful sometimes as you can see this was what it would look like before simulation so I reset the uh, 3d and 2d setup so this was what it looked like um, before before simulating and if we hit simulate everything would go together however I have now moved everything to a different place so it would not set up properly um you may use the press and piping feature. I'm gonna undo all of that and we'll get back to the garment here. If you press and then select piping, you can click and drag, or sorry, click and move and then click again. I think that already has piping there actually. Double click and it adds piping. 
as you can see there's a little bit of piping there and that will show up in your 3d model just like that alrighty and in the 2d window is where it becomes a little bit more um, important I'm just gonna reset the the model here so in the 2d window like I said you use your middle mouse to pan around you can uh, you have this button up here which is sync so with this turned off that is gray anything you add so if I was to add just a square piece of fabric for example it's it's uh, it's not going to show up in the 3d view until I turn sync on if I turn sync on however and create a piece of fabric as you can see it shows up immediately so we tend to work with sync on at all times edit pattern that allows you as you might uh, have gathered to select say a vertex and move it now one quick thing I'm gonna mention is when you select a, a vertex so click and drag if you hold down shift it gives you perfect 45 and 90 degree angles to work off of. I use this a lot. It makes it really helpful. Another thing that's really helpful is the background grid. Pay attention to that. We also have the next one, which is transform pattern. So this allows you to, well, transform it as in move it, scale it, rotate it, things like that. So that allows you transform uh, properties. Then you have uh, edit curvature, which um, allows you to select a line, click, and then it allows you to drag out a curve. So that allows you to create curved, uh, s curved parts to your to your design. Um, and then, of course, you can go and you can edit the points. You can add more points in, etc. We won't be getting into that too much. Um, polygon, that is one of the more important tools. So that's this one that looks like square with a chunk taken out of it. That allows you to simply click, 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 click. And then you go back to your last or your first point and it creates an oddly shaped piece of fabric. As you can see, it's sitting out there by the head. But obviously it's a polygon and number of sides. You can create a perfect rectangle just like that and you also have the circle so that allows you to create a circle and as you can see line length you can create a uh, realistically sized um, garments if you want however I tend to just work over the avatar the avatar that you see in gray here in the background is to scale with the 3d model and we also have internal polygon rectangle and circle and what that does is it allows you to create uh, basically I don't know how I describe it but it's basically like as you can see we now have a square here and like now sew a dish if I was to create a, 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 a square I could now sew this onto that internal part so it it basically um, I don't know it's kind of it'd be like kind of like cutting or adding extra faces into um, an already made garment without actually adding extra fabric. It's like an inset almost, uh, but we won't be using that until we get onto pockets and stuff. Then you have your sewing. So you have the sewing select tool, which allows you to edit an already sewed point. As you can see, this point here is sewn to or this line here is sewn to that line there and you have some options you have fold angle so that will de determine at what angle it will fold that stock is 180 so it'll it'll fold uh, completely in the opposite direction but you could have 360 it'll go completely down and you have fold strength how how stiff it is basically um, but you won't use that very often. What you will use the most often is segment sewing. What this allows you to do is go select one line. So I'll click right here and then drag or not drag. Sorry, go to any other point and it allows you to make sewing, uh, setups. As you can see, it's now appeared on the model here at the top, right by the clavicles. Um, this will now be sewn together. If I was to simulate, it will try to sew it together. Like so. 
And then uh, you can do free form sewing, but I don't find that all that useful. Um, and then we have um, add graphics, but we won't be using that at all in this 101 series. So anyways, let's start off by creating a t-shirt. So in the next video, we will create a simple t-shirt. And we will use only a few of these buttons. And we'll start from fresh and we'll learn how to create a very simple t-shirt and then export it to our 3D modeling program of choice. So thanks for watching from the team here at BlenderTech.com. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, please like it. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos. We're on social media on the links on your screen. If you dislike this video for some reason, please tell us why so we can continually improve based on your community input. We also take requests, so we'll see you next time. Remember, create your way.